as you can see they're properly used if you've got shiny rock sliders then you yeah you're just not using it properly Right, so I'm here with my mate Andy. You've probably seen this on numerous videos, uh, but we've never really walked around it too much. So we'll give you a quick run through of it, see how it works for him, and uh, you'll see there's a, a really, really good crossover here because it's it's not a, so much an overland truck, it's not so much a bushcraft truck, but there's lots of really, really nice like vintage items, things like that, but tied in with the modern things like your solar uh, and like your fridges and things. So, I mean, what originally did you have, what did you buy to start with and how have you modified it? I bought an old 186,000 mile uh, XEDF Energy white truck. Uh, workhorse, special vehicles, heavy duty, heavily battered rear end. Um, yeah, just a you know a, a really big kind of project, um, and then just did it as I went along. So we're looking at 35 inch tyres, uh, Simex Extreme Trekkers, um, offset wheels, 16s. Resprayed it completely in uh, NATO green. Did that outside over a summer. Um, full road roll cage made by a friend of mine who's a, a race car fabricator, vintage race car fabricator, a six point down on the chassis. Um, redid the side boxes which it, the, the electric board had is just flat so copied the wall folds, had them, had them fabricated in steel. They'll fit by the four jerry cans um, or I've got a specially made wood box which we'll show you in a sec. Uh, that goes the other side, keeps my wood nice and dry in the truck and then when I'm out um, I can have the fire outside and the wood doesn't get wet, it's all nicely sealed. Uh, what else have we done? Um, yeah, just the usual off-roading mod, so it's got a two inch lift, old man in new springs and shockers, um, camber correction kit, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've taken the Salisbury axle out, put a wolf axle in the back, P38 axle, uh, with a view to putting a, um, a lot of, you know, front and rear locker in there, it's slightly easier to do and easier to, to maintain if parts go wrong. Salisbury's are wonderful, but twice the price of everything else. Um, so that, so. so pretty much that is, you've you've taken an extra utility board Land Rover, yep. you've then just made it a lot more capable yep. and a lot more safe if you do roll it yep. um, with yep. the extreme off-road mods you've got. Absolutely, yeah. For the camping side of it, what kind of a thing have you done to live out of a, in a field? Yeah, so the, the key there is modular, so I'll, it, it can do everything that I need it to do. If I want to go pay and play and test my skills and, you know, uh, test my metal as they say, you know, getting stuck in loads of crap and then having to recover it out and that kind of stuff. Um, I can do that. If I want to go green laning, I can do that. Um, if I want to go and do a few miles, you know, I can, I can do that, although the tyres are a bit noisy. Um, if I want to go and camp for a, a one or two days, I've got a system where I can just sleep in the back of it, maybe have the kitchen uh, lay corn box on the side. Um, and if I want to go full setup like this, I'm doing four days, five days, or three months, or whatever, then this is the whole setup that you see. So it's a case of I can do whatever I want, and then if I need to take it, I'll take it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So so we've got okay. So on the vehicle, we've got a, um, a, a very low-profile solar panel, which you won't be able to see because it just sits underneath the roll cage, and it's the marine one that you can walk on anyway, semi-flexible. Um, with a, a soda charge, we'll show you some close up to that in a bit, I'm sure. Um, and then I've got a great big lorry leisure battery in there um, that you know does all the ancillaries. Um, and a, you know, dual charger system for when I'm going along. If it's cloudy, then you know, the, the uh, alternator on the engine is, is charging everything. Uh, so, drop down table at the back. As I say, if I'm doing a light camp, then this drops down. That little latch goes in to see that hole there. <laughs> 
See that little hole there? Yep. So if I park on an angle, it's not going to fall off. So that just pops in, lock it in place, and then I'll be, my gas bottle, which goes in the side, I'll show you that compartment in a minute. Um, and then, thanks to Rich's mate Larry at LBV, uh, we've got a, a Snowmaster Traveller Series fridge that opens up with a remote control. Great piece of kit. Thanks, Larry. Um, <laughs> and then, if you want, you can't see him from there, can you? Let's couple of lane corn boxes inside again squaddy proof waterproof um, you get three shelves in all of them you can just stack all kinds of thing in them leisure batteries in there silly uh, Revin Kevin stereo 10 inch sub in there but we won't talk about that um, yeah that's about it this is uh, a radiation hazard um, Insulation kit off a of Wolf Radio tent, so it's got a, a foil back in with uh, a closed cell foam and then a nylon cover on top, so you can brush all the dirt off easy when you go off roading. And then behind that, I've got a 25 inch Celatex on the flats, <coughs> just double sided glued, uh, so contact ad adhesive spray. And then in the corners, I've put uh, Army, roll mat, Army Roll Mat closed cell foam. Um, and then it goes through and does the cab as well. I bought two kits because it's a 110, it's designed for a, for a 90. So then I just <coughs> just brought the rest down and I've uh, insulated the whole thing. And now it's warm as anything. I can sleep in there at like minus five. Don't really feel it at all. Little solution, squaddy proof. These are, I think they're 90 pound um, uh, magazine uh, pouches with the separators taken out. Put your little 99p things in there. You've got tea, coffee, sugar and a cup ready to go yeah okay so as you can see it's nice and dark in here we've got um, some homemade um, kind of window blackouts uh, made from an 18 by 24 t uh, tent section which most of my gear is um, this is the rest of the radiation hazard kit if you can find one get one the way they fit are fantastic it's all velcroed in and it'll make your cab so warm it's unbelievable um, <coughs> dog guard in here good for, for you know, attaching bits and pieces um, extra light for the tent that's on constant charge off the battery fire extinguisher of course decent lockable lockable center cubby um, dashboard slightly rearranged that um, took out a, um, th these are illuminated off a TD5 wanted everything nice and bright so I could see everything at night um, got rid of the main gauges and put in Durite marine gauges with LEDs built in Everything, <coughs> everything's crystal clear and then just put an LED behind the uh, the speedo and then just you know usual stereo it's my favorite switch um, and then those are ready for the the locker and the uh, <coughs> and the um, air pump extra light there so I don't accidentally keep it on <laughs> shines in my face that's it CB <coughs> CB of course um, the only speaker pods made those out of some marine ply on a bit of body filler um, that's probably about it in here. Some nice little touches, like you've got these um, air vents which normally on a Land Rover these will just do a little bit of a blow up here but these ones actually blow out uh, so you can actually see your side windows, little yeah. things like that and they actually blow into your face as well. Um, these are shockingly expensive so nobody ever buys them, uh, apart from Andy who does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other thing as well, they ain't gonna nick it. <laughs> that's it I think. Being snorkel, uh, rock sliders, as you can see they're properly used if you've got shiny rock sliders then you yeah you're just not using it properly um quarter protectors on the back it's a 110 got big uh, big hangovers on the back they've come in very very useful um winch bumper on the front um light guards extra wheel, uh, extra wide wheel arches uh, what else have we got that's probably about it yeah dyneema rope obviously the best rope you can get if you don't want to kill yourself <laughs> so this is Ratty Rat, the Rat Rod Barbecue with its its new little tattoo. Um, this is an old uh, Broil King uh, Porter Chef Barbecue, 1975 or something. Uh, got off a guy off eBay and I wanted something that looked really ratty on the outside and I was going to put all brand new internals in it because they haven't changed the interior of these for, for, for years. So there it is, all brand new internals. Uh, it was on rocks, now it's on a, a Flavor Wave um, grill. Um, everything is, is absolutely perfect inside. Motorbike handle on the outside, new pins on the legs, and we're good to go. Cook, cooks like a good one. Um, where do we start? Right. Drinking water in here. This is a, a, a 1980s, I guess, um, 
stainless steel catering tin, MOD. Um, just put a brass tap, garden tap on it for transportation, just turn it inside out, put the tap on the inside. Um, put a couple of little uh, P clips on and it just you know sits on there. Bit of roll mat underneath so it doesn't damage my roll cage. There's my drinking water. Put a seal around the top so it doesn't leak when, it, when we're transporting it around. Um, lake horn box, as you can already tell, one of my favorite things. Um, again, totally modular, I can take it with me. I've got a mini version in one of the boxes inside if I don't want to take too much with me, but I've got everything, absolutely everything I need for yeah, pantry and kitchen sink. So I won't go into too much detail. Made a couple of um, marine ply cutting boards for it. They fit in there. I've basically got everything that you bloody need. Um, full on kitchen drawer, everything, gas cooker, grill, uh, obviously got the fridge inside, draining board. I know this is a, um, a nine by nine connector. This is designed to attach on the back of a, um, <coughs> a Wolf Land Rover 90. Um, these bungees attach onto the vehicle. So I've got options here. Sometimes I have the Land Rover here. We've got a full, uh, fully connected, um, got a three room, well, Land Rover plus two room setup. Um, this weekend I decided I wanted it open, a bit more social, you know, invite a few people over for the for the fire at night. Um, <clears throat> the connector, if you get the right one for the right tent, it zips in here. Fairly easy to, to do once you understand how all the little toggles work and how they make life easy. I know a lot of people give up on these, but it's just finding that knowledge and finding how they're all supposed to get together. Um, so in here we've got nine by nine. Um, lightened it a bit there was, there's normally two flaps that come down here on both sides never used them it's extra material so they went um, done a few tweaks here and there put a, um, a chimney flat flap in the roof um, that's for a slightly bigger catering flue um, but if you just get a silicon baking mat and cut it slightly shorter put it on the outside you're completely waterproof carp fishing bed everyone's done that thanks to the fishing boys for for educating me couple of little light hangers up here um, we have a full-on ensuite shower as well <laughs> uh, so here this bucket is my hot water tank obviously wood burner there um, that's great for doing the washing up or you know cleaning anything and then when that's hot enough put take that off put it on the floor over here this goes inside this is my that's my shower mat so I have a shower there. When you clean, you go to two mat system, uh, one of which the dogs peed on, but never mind about that. Two mat system, <coughs> dry yourself off, and then you're good to go. And the water just drains away into the ground. Uh, yeah. It's good when you've got friends who are fabricators. So that goes in there. Like a glove. And that's it. Off we go, no wood rattling around. So, box on the other side, um, we've got a gas bottle in here, this nice little camo, this nice little NATO green coat, um, spare paraffin there, that's a box for one of the hurricane lanterns, the other one just sits in there loose, and then what we've done here, basically got quick connector systems off um, uh, high pressure hoses. And basically this is all quick connect nice and solid off you go put your gas on and that's it well, i can just have one going obviously it doesn't leak uh that's that tactical wind brakes <laughs> always good so this is basically um part of an 18 by 24 uh, center section of a, uh, a tent uh, again repurposed and cut sewn broomsticks copper pipe spikes on the end with stainless steel covers on them um, these won't break made up some little uh, sliders for them and yeah really just a, a wind break for life I guess <laughs> um, awning again comes from the, the same the same piece of material uh, this is probably phase three this is evolved over about four or five years um, we've copied kind of like the Oz tent pitch on on here so we've got a, a pole through there a couple of um, poles that don't even need pegging so the, the tension is brought on by by these ropes here again just well picked up these um, 
poles from, from Anchor Supplies. Um, yeah, I put a bit of elastic through the middle so you fold them all up and then you know they, they all stay together. Uh, put a loop in the in the middle of this to create a, a channel for any water collecting on the top that now runs down really efficiently. I'm sure we'll get some rain soon. Put a couple of loops in the middle just far away enough from the um, the pole so that in the wind they don't clatter against them. Um, yeah and then proper manly guide ropes with proper manly temp pegs. Right so there you go it's another Land Rover totally different kind of way of doing things uh, totally modular, modular as well so as you can see he does everything from his off-roading to his green laning to his camping to his heavy camping and uh, I think he's got it pretty sussed and pretty dialed into that one so yeah there's gonna be a previous video over here there's gonna be the subscribe over here and the patreon just down here so I hope you enjoyed that thank you very much <laughs>